The information contained in this podcast is an expression of opinion and does not constitute investment advice. This is the Gold Money Foundation podcast with Alistair McLeod, keeping you up to date with expert opinion on precious metals and the markets. Hello, this is Alistair McLeod on behalf of the Gold Money Foundation, and I have with me Sven Sambunyak, who has organized a very interesting conference in Zagreb, attended by a lot of people, I must say, uh, in a country where, so far as we're aware, there is not a lot of interest in gold. Welcome to this podcast, Sven. Thank you. Uh, please tell me a little bit about the gold market that you perceive in, um, in this country, in, in, in Croatia. Gold market in Croatia is virtually non-existent uh, due to legal constraints. We have a tax on, uh, on investment gold and uh, other precious metals, which exceeds 60, 60%, six zero percent, which uh, to my understanding, it's, it's the world record. And in that environment, uh, it is, uh, there is no business logic actually to establish an investment to precious metal business or a market because we are a fairly small country and uh, uh, we are adjacent to, to European Union. This so is Slovenia. Exactly, as well as uh, Hungary on the north. And so pretty much anyone who wishes to buy investment precious metals would go to European Union where of course uh, tax is zero and uh, it's very affordable. I mean in terms of worldwide situation you know it's it's much it's affordable compared to Croatian circumstances. But Croatia is due to go into the European Union it's due to become a member uh, sometime next year isn't it? Exactly. Croatia has finished the process of, of, of negotiations for the joining in and uh, it is, uh, the date has been set. It will be uh, July 1st, 2013. Right. So that's about um, sort of 14 months away. Um, given everything that's going on in the Eurozone, which I know is not quite the same thing as the European Union being a subset of it, mm -hmm. um, is this causing any second thoughts amongst the politicians in Croatia? Uh, not exactly. They are all pretty much eager to jump in. And, um, and it seems that the general public sentiment is also that we would be better off in European Union in spite of uh, all different issues that there, that there are now uh, there. Um, you, they're not worried about the possibility that the European Union might um, draw on Croatia to uh, help subsidize some of the other states which have got themselves into financial difficulty? So far we do not think about it and it may very well be that the general public is not aware actually how these things work in European Union. But once we join, that will definitely become a political issue as well as of course economic issue. And uh, I of course expect that that, that that issue will be put at the table. Changing the subject uh, somewhat, um, the conference was about precious metals, um, but I couldn't help noticing that um, at the university there were lots of young men mm -hmm. who I spoke to who were particularly interested in Austrian economics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now, is, this is very much a minority game, obviously, uh, but I'm interested that the young in particular seem to be interested more than any other category. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, the sort of economic views um, in, in Croatia and uh, whether you see growing interest in Austrian economics or how would you see this developing? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, economic, uh, so 
economic views or views or an economic issues in Croatia are pretty much um, geared toward the Keynesian economics, of course, just in any other Western country. Um, so uh, the Keynesianism is taught at the universities and uh, virtually every journalist uh, supports those kinds of views in, in mainstream media. So uh, in that regard, you, c- you can, one can say that it's quite a unison uh, voice in that regard. However, there is, of course, a growing uh, number of people, persons, particularly young ones, uh, who over the Internet uh, are able to see alternative views, particularly those who are good in English. And uh, nowadays, uh, Croatia and Croatian youth in particular are very well versed with English. Uh, And so uh, that, to me, is a good foundation for for some future um, development of the the interest uh, on the uh, Austrian School of Economics. And I have to to thank you personally for being, uh, um, in a sense, initiator of actually the first gathering of Austrian-minded people here in Croatia. We would typically, so far, we would typically meet uh, only on the internet in various forums. But uh, now that when uh, you were the speaker at one of the events where we actually physically gathered, and that was, to my knowledge, for the first time ever, and I hope that uh, uh, something can come out of it. Well, it's all about spreading the word, and uh, but it wouldn't have happened without your organization, and I think it, that was very, very well done. Because your background is as a journalist, am I, am I right? Exactly. Uh, so I have kind of like three loves in terms of my business life. Uh, first, well, I, I, I'm educated as a journalist, but then uh, in the mid-1990s, I entered uh, into a field of of the internet, and I was probably one of the first, if not the first, mainstream journalist who actually had an email address and who wrote about uh, the internet in mainstream publications, daily newspaper. And, uh, and that at a certain point, I realized that this is something with such a huge potential that I would like to be part of it. And I kind of um, changed my focus. I, I, I went into that direction. I, and for 10 years, I worked on, uh, with, with and for various internet companies uh, in developing internet services and being a leader of uh, uh, such projects. And, um, and now, and then a couple of years ago, particularly after the 2008 crash, I kind of, uh, I, I was intellectually shocked when that happened and I was wondering what, what was going on and how no one uh, predicted it. And, and then I started to look for the answers on the internet and I found the Austrian school which led me to precious metals, and now I'm developing this my third uh, love uh, in in terms of business life, and that is the, the precious metals. And I now feel pretty much like uh, I felt with the, the internet in, in the mid 1990s. That's a very interesting comparison. So um, here we are summarizing uh, in Croatia. Uh, with this horrible tax of 60% on uh, the acquisition of gold. Um, you are 30 kilometers from Slovenia? Yes, is it well, and Croatia is somewhat oddly shaped, but pretty much any point in, uh, in Croatia is typically not 
farther from any um, any uh, border with the foreign country further than like 30 kilometers so so it is fairly easy to get to the border and the basically the largest border we have with the European Union which is both Slovenia and Italy and the, and Hungary so it is fairly easy to get to get Absolutely. there so you can so um, really what you what you can potentially do is you can set up the basis of a Croatian business uh, across the border so that you are ready when they drop the gold tax which presumably they would have to do as part of tax harmonization as they go into the European Union. Exactly. Actually, I already, through my website, which is the first and the, I would say, most popular website in Croatian language about precious metals and investing in precious metals, which is srebrozlato.com, um, I mm, spread the word about precious metals and I through some some of my partners uh, fr from Slovenia I offer to cre uh, f to Croatian citizens uh, uh, an opportunity and possibility to go across the border and buy precious metals there uh, at the affordable price and uh, and store it there and so I'm actually kind of like building this uh, my uh, business right now and in a, a way a, while I'm waiting for Croatia to enter European Union. So if, if any of our listeners are interested to look at your website, can you spell it out <laughs> for okay. them? Okay. It's, it's a Croatian uh, um, two words, consists of two words, which means silvergold.com, but that's, of course, in, in, in English. Um, um, the, the, uh, the spelling is, let me, I've, let me, you can do it. Yep, um, I've, I've got it here. It's spelled A-U-S-T-R-I. No, 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 no. You, this is the other ah, one. Ah, right, sorry. It's uh, www.srebrozlato.com. Now, that's just in Croatian, isn't it? It is in Croatian because my main uh, idea and goal is to to address the the population that speaks Croatian and related languages, which means Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro, uh, which are pretty much the common language. And, and I have some visitors also from there. Right. And I think um, if anyone is interested, you can actually, if you use Google Chrome, you can get an automatic translation. So sure, that, that, exactly. that deals with that. So that shouldn't be a problem. Yes. Um, how do you see the future for uh, gold and silver? I mean, obviously, you're, you must be optimistic that there's going to be increasing demand. Otherwise, you wouldn't be taking the trouble to try and develop a business. Mm -hmm. But have you got um, any view as to how quickly interest is likely to develop? Or is it, you know, we just don't know and we've just got to, we think it's going to work and let's just give it a go? Well, uh, I, if, as for Croatia, I believe that uh, that particular interest will development of, it, of the interest will be in, har in harmony of the development of the interest in Western countries. As, as you know, uh, we still have some ways to go in uh, European Union and the States because there is not such a strong culture of owning and uh, buying and owning gold and silver and other precious metals. Uh, so um, I believe that it will be my, it will be helpful as that uh, interest grows and uh, the markets progresses in the, the countries that we seek to emulate. That that will be also helpful for us. Um, and of course, I'm uh, trying to give my portion to to that. Yes, absolutely. But, and I've been very interested uh, learning a little bit about the economy here. Mm -hmm. I haven't learned much, but uh, I think in general terms, you are less progressed in terms of overall debt in the economy mm -hmm. than um, the rest of us. So perhaps if someone can understand that the Keynesian approach isn't working, mm -hmm. that uh, if they really work out what to do, um, it wouldn't be as nearly as painful to implement the correct solution <laughs> 
here in Croatia as it would be, say, in France or, or, or the UK or US? Well, um, that's, a, a, that's a good question. And um, I'm somewhat concerned in that regard uh, because uh, in spite of the fact that we haven't grown our debts in such large proportions to other European countries, uh, our, um, our economy is still very heavily dependent on both uh, governmental subsidies and the governmental purchases. And, uh, and the statistics are, I, I do not see very encouraging. There are some things that are better. For example, we still do not have capital tax gains whatsoever of, on uh, we do, don't have them on uh, on interest uh, on the or on stock market profits. Uh, no, nothing, nothing like that. Uh, but on the other hand, we have exceptionally high taxes, like VAT tax is twenty five percent, and then uh, um, and then taxes on on salaries are very high, except. People do not know that because they are hidden just like in the States in a sense that they are hidden away from, uh, from, from the worker. You mean the employer pays it? and in, in a greater amount. So basically people are not aware that what they actually get is just like 50 or even less percent of what is actually paid by the employer. Uh, and that is another uh, thing. And then we have a, a huge... Uh, Overload, overload of uh, um, workers that work for the government, and uh, and uh, low un- uh, low employment rate, high unemployment rate. Uh, about f- only fifty percent of the workforce actually work. About twenty percent of unemployment. Um, and uh, and we have been in a recession for eight or even ten straight uh, quarters in in terms of negative GDP. And so, um, but on the other hand, again, it is interesting. I can sense that the black market <laughs> is uh, developing rapidly. Uh, perhaps even flourishing, our main industry is tourism. And you have a lot of opportunity to, uh, for, for black market uh, in tourism. Yes. And so, so, but you know, that is that you cannot uh, base your economy for on a long run on a, on a black market, but that is some, some, something uh, through which uh, uh, our people coping with this uh, heavy crisis that is upon us. Right? Yes, well, I know governments don't like black markets, but I view them as the most efficient part of the market. Exactly, <laughs> yes, exactly. And so there are really people are trying to figure out ways how to, how to deal with the everyday life, you know. Well, Sven, it's been very interesting talking to you, and um, it's also been very interesting to meet some people in Zagreb and try and get a feel for Zagreb and um, Croatia as a whole. Um, And uh, I wish you every success. And thank you very much indeed for agreeing to take part in this podcast. Thank you. Subscribe to the Gold Money newsletter at www.goldmoney.com to receive email updates on new articles, videos and iTunes podcasts from our Gold Research section. (laughs) 